Wilson. Dover and the Smoking Gun by Paul Mendelssohn, based on characters created by Joyce Porter. Scotland Yard, September 9th, from Sergeant Charles McGregor. Application for transfer number 863. You'd think a diligent and rather brilliant young police officer could take a bit of compassionate leave when he's got problems back at home without his boss saying, Who's going to get my ruddy facts for me? <coughs> but not Chief Inspector Wilfred Dover. Oh, no. It's self, self, self with that fat old... So who's died then? Your mum? Your dad? Your Scotty? It's a, a very old and dear friend. I'll be staying with my father. Well, make it quick and bring me back some single malt. And Dover had no idea of my true motive for taking leave. Motives having never been his strong suit. But unfortunately, he soon found out. <coughs> Dover on the case. Who is it? It's Chief Constable Mackay, calling you from Glasgow. Oh, yeah. Got phones up there now, have you? Very witty. It's about your sergeant. Who? Oh, the boy, McGregor. Not been savaged by a rabid Aggie, has he? He's been investigating a murder. What? On his own? Well, don't worry, the killer's safe. Hmm. That's the problem. We don't think there is a killer. To be honest, we don't even think there's been a murder. So what do you expect me to do about it? There you go. One more pale ale. Chart. So, now, I'm having to cross the border in a no-man's land just to bring back my deluded sergeant who thinks some old girlfriend's been murdered. Which, by all accounts, is a total impossibility. Oh. What do you say to that, then? They've eaten all my scotch eggs, sir, and we're not even in Peterborough. Welcome to Glasgow, dear old Glasgow town. No one to meet me, got to carry me own case. Can't even tell anyone when I'm coming. <coughs> uh, uh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, pal. Excuse me, have you got a leaf for a cigarette here? No, but I'm right out of fags, so that'll do me nicely. Oh, 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 27 Spears Bridge Road, 21, 23, 25. Ah, Dunsinning. What sort of a name? Ah, Free Fags, my favourite brand. <laughs> Come on. Who are you? I'm fine, thank you. Who's yourself? <laughs> See what I did there? Foreign travel hasn't dulled the old repartee. I'm asking again, who are you? Where I come from, Sunshine, I ask the questions. Mr McGregor, isn't it? Depends who's asking. Chief Inspector Dover, Scotland Yard. See? How hard was that? Even fatter than her Charlie said you was. All muscle, Mr McGregor. Did he tell you I had a mind like a steel trap? No. But you tell me you give him no credit for his brilliance. You hamper his progress and that you stifle his... Yeah, 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 yeah. No. 
Like I'm perishing out here. My brother! And he said if you ever took your boots off, I should book myself a week away in Loch Lomond. Aren't you going to let me in? Throw it up, fag in your mouth, I'm no. We are a nae smoking, nae drinking household. Dear Lord. McGregor! Chief Inspector! What on earth are you doing here? Could I ask you the same question? Why are you dressed like that? Going to a funeral? Cremation, actually. Ah, oh, not that young woman from the car crash. Oh, you heard? Well, I didn't trek up here because I missed you. Come on, you can tell me on the way. Eh? Often get good scoff after a cremation. Oh, God. An old man, McGregor. Make up the best bed, even if it's yours. I'm billeting here until I can drag your idiot son back home. Oh, oh my birthdays have come at once. So, a young woman is driving home from work on a dark country road late at night in a fast sports car. No traffic around, no alcohol in the bloodstream. Not a shred of evidence the car's faulty or been tampered with. She loses control, careers over the edge, Everyone with any sense says it's accidental death. Aye. That all you got to say, laddie? I Give me one reason, just one, that you're not as daft as you look. She's an actress. Ah, you should have said. But what's that got to do with the price of cheese? She had a car crash. She didn't bore herself to death. Oh, I forgot. You hate the theatre, don't you, sir? Uh, Fiona, that's her name. Fiona Gordon. She was on her way back from the King's Theatre in Glasgow. She lives... lived out in the country with her husband. Been doing the journey at night for years. Knew it like the back of her hand. So maybe she took her eye off the ball. Oh. Drivers get lazy, or perhaps she got a nasty little review from a cruel critic and decided to top herself. No. Or she hit a trossack that wandered in front of the car. The trossacks are a place. Who cares? You got no ruddy evidence. She sent me a postcard. Not about to be murdered, wish you were here. She said she needed to see me urgently in confidence. Well, that could have been about anything. I perhaps she still had a thing for you. McGregor? Sergeant? Oh, lad. You still had a thing for her. Neither here nor there, sir. Fine. Then slow down. Good boy. Well... Who do you think did it, Mr. Detective? The same person you always think did it whenever a wife dies mysteriously. The husband? Well, it's 99% true in my experience. Mm. I forgot to ask, how is Mrs. Dover? Oh, pretty safe. For now. So let us just pause to remember on this saddest of days a beautiful, kind lady whose special flame was snuffed out far too soon. But the good Lord moves in mysterious ways. So does a triumph TRA, apparently. Yes, sir, can you not just be quiet until poor Fiona leaves us? Sorry, laddie. No, you're grieving. And now we bid... A final goodbye to dear Fiona. <laughs> there she goes. Um, is that the better man who won her over there? Aye, Dr. Gourley Weir. He's a psychiatrist. Uh, money for old rope, I'd say. Bet he's loaded. I'll see. Runs a huge private practice in Glasgow. Into lots of newfangled stuff, apparently. Well, there's your answer. Mind you, he's a lot better looking than you. I'll give him that. If you like that sort of thing. Well, I do. <coughs> OK, I'm just saying. That's a jolly little tune. Pum, pum, pum. Oh, sir! It was my poor darling Fiona's favourite. Bonnie Mary of Argyle. Hello, Charles. Good of you to come. Gurley. Can I introduce you to Wilfred Dover? Chief Inspector Wilfred Dover, Scotland Yard. Well, I'm honoured, I suppose. What brings you to this Scottish Yard, Chief Inspector? God only knows. Well, it's good that Charles here has some support. Did he tell you that he and my Fiona were once very close? Oh, he hasn't stopped. Here, now that you've sent your poor wife behind the curtain, 
Anybody mind if I have a fag? Yes, it's a filthy habit and very disrespectful. You should kill that addiction before it kills you, Mr Dover. There are ways. Good to see you, Charles. Really? Morag, thank you for coming. Cool customer, eh, sir? So what do you say now? Let's find some fresh air and pollute it. Nice gardens. Very restful. Well, he does seem the murdering type, but I still need a bit more, laddie. He had her cremated. Huh? Well, it's obvious, sir. He wanted to get rid of the body before anyone thought to look for a poison. Well, must have been a bloody slow-acting poison. You told me yourself he was at a conference 50 miles away when she snuffed it. The thing about murder... Ooh, are you two gentlemen mystery writers? Uh, eh? Oh, yeah, no. I, I'm just an old friend. Was, of oh, Fiona's. Ah, wasn't it so awful sad? That poor man. Last I heard, Fiona was a woman's name. Oh, uh, no, I meant poor Dr Weir. To, to lose his wife like that. Are you a friend of his, then? Well, sort of. Dr Weir helped me. Still does bless him. Nothing major. No one's ever said that we Etty Silver call the men in the white coats. <laughs> Sadly, he wasn't able to help his unfortunate Fiona. Unfortunate Fiona? Doc, oh, listen to me. I must just go and pay my respects to Dr Weir. Nice talking to you. Just hold your horses, miss, whatever. Yes? Don't have any fags, do you? My friend is running out. No, sorry. A filthy habit. Ah, not you as well. McGregor, you must have a couple left. Oh, we're in the Garden of Remembrance. Gimme, or you're back home on the next train. Oh, here you are. <laughs> Funny how cremation gives you the urge. I did ask you politely, Chief Inspector. Put it out! No! I did tell him, Gourley. We're having some people back to the house, Charles, but I'm sure you and the Chief Inspector have some important cases to solve. So, what do you think now, sir? Guilty of sin. Could have done with some nice funeral meats, ruddy starving. OK, so all we have to do now is find out how he did it, and of course why. Oh, we could just do it your way and lock him up. You see, laddie, those years of training did pay off. For the first time in my chequered history with Wilfred Dover, I felt there was an actual meeting of minds. I knew that we would put the man who killed my dear Fiona behind bars if my father didn't kill Dover first. Well, you take that fool weed out your mouth or will I ram it up your fat cock? This is worse than being married. At least Mrs Dover speaks English. No wonder McGregor's mum left you. She didn't leave me. She passed away. From hunger, more than likely. Call out a tea. McGregor! You're buying me supper! Then we're going back to bother that shrink. One lad did classics at university, by the way. Got a third, no less. You'll be one for him one day. Sorry, no comprendes. Goodbye, my darling. Destroying the evidence, eh? But... Oh, not you again. How did you find me? Your neighbour said you'd be out here, Gurley, by your own private lock. Dear Lord, man, you'd even bother me when I'm scattering my wife's ashes in the place she loved best. We just want to ask you a few questions, Mr Weir. It's Dr Weir. And why do I have to answer questions from Scotland Yard? Because that's how we get the answers. Oh, oh my God. Is this about Fiona? Man, she died in a car crash on a mountain road. Everyone knows that. Without, apparently, any other cars around. Hardly any skid marks in a car that had just been serviced. Don't you find that odd, Gourley? Not the word I'd immediately go for. Tragic, maybe. What would you stand again from your wife's death, Doctor? What? Simple question. Well, here's the simple answer, you simpleton. Nothing! She was a mildly successful Scottish actress, not the heiress to a distillery fortune. Charles. You actually thinking I might have killed Fiona? 
The thought had crossed. Oh, you never liked me, did you? But, man, I was 50 miles away. We were contented, Fiona and I. Happy. She had everything to live for. Sadly, we weren't blessed with children, but... Uh, oh, can you please just go? Charles, for pity's sake. Come on, sir. We best... It's getting late. Yeah, OK. Oh, talking of distilleries, Doctor, there isn't one round here does night tours, is there? <laughs> Tell me, McGregor, why is it that scotch is no cheaper up here than it is in the smoke? Why should you care? You haven't paid for a single round or for the two Aberdeen Angus t bones You come to a place, you have to imbibe the culture. It's our crimes are solved, laddie. How are we going to solve this one, then? No idea. I'm still not totally sure there's actually been a crime. What? She said I know me... need to see you urgently. Well, OK. Let's just assume your old rival bumped off his missus. <laughs> While she was driving alone on an empty road and he was in a hotel, nowhere near the scene of the crime, I say again, how? And more to the point, why? Do you want those chips? I did. Not that wee woman. The funny one at the cremation, Hester, Hetty, Etty, Etty Silver. Aye, she suggested that all wasn't so hunky-dory with Fiona. So where does that take us? The theatre. Oh. Actors have to observe, sir. And they're never happier than when they're talking about themselves. Mm. There are no mysteries in the theatre. Except why anyone bothers to go. OK, quiet, please. <coughs> now I need all my gang members and the girls from the top. <coughs> Especially you, Laura. <laughs> all right, Dolph? Now, I want this act to end with a ban. Not a whimper, I want manners. Remember the source material. Gavin? Oh, Lord help us, it's a ruddy musical. I've died and gone to hell. What the? That's okay, Gavin, stop. Sorry, guys, take a wee break while I deal with this tramp who's just come in. Last fella called me a tramp, ended up only being able to sing the high notes. You're lucky you're just a director. Uh, actually, he's an actor-director, sir. Finlay Gamble. What, he's just acting, being the director? Don't tell me the real director's dead too. Will you tell me who you are, or will I have the doorman throw you out? I'd like to see him try. Name's Dover. Chief Inspector Dover, Scotland Yard. This is Sergeant McGregor. How do you do? McGregor of the Yard? Fiona's friend? She, she talked about me? All the time. Very proud to have a pal in the yard she was. Oh. <laughs> hey, are you OK, pal? Uh, I, I... Fine, I... Just need to sit down, that's all. The lad's still in shock. Oh, it's been a shock to us all, Chief Inspector. Poor Fee. Such a gentle, kind lady. Do anything for anyone. Uh, come to my dressing room, both of you. I'll make us some coffee. So sorry, Laura. We won't be too long. That's fine for me. You carry on. I'll just, you know, try not to trip over the furniture. You'll be grand, darling. Don't worry. The show must go on. Must it? And black for you, Sergeant. Uh, please, yes, thank you. You'll have to forgive my being thick, but what is Scotland Yard doing up in this neck of the woods? Uh, Chief Inspector? Where's your biscuits? Thought it was all expense account lunches with you acting lot. You're thinking of TV, Chief Inspector, and Murdered Sleep isn't a cheap show. Mm, funny name for a musical, Murdered Sleep. It's a quote. The show's a musical updating of the Scottish play to Glasgow Gangland of the 30s. What oh, Scottish yeah. play? Well, you know, the Scottish play. I said... What Scottish play? He means the Scottish play. What, the name of the play is the Scottish play? No. no. Listen, Mr Actor Director, if you don't tell me the name of the ruddy play, you'll be singing your big number through your... It's bad luck, sir. To mention the name of the original Shakespeare play in the theatre? What's Shakespeare got to do with it? Now talk, laddie. Oh, mm. sod it. How much more bad luck can we have? I play Huey Macbeth and poor Fiona. She, she played my wife Sadie. No, none the wiser. So, what was your relationship with this Sadie Macbeth woman? <laughs> Were you two carrying on? Chief Inspector. They're actors, McGregor. Darling this, darling that. Add it like rabbits. I'm a married man. <laughs> oh, sorry, aren't you wearing your godpiece? Sir! Oh, it was she! Come on to me! What? God, I'm good. 
They always spill the beans to Dover. And their lunch. Oh, um, c can you carry on, Mr. Gemmell? Please. Oh, I've known Fee Galton for years, and we'd always got on well, but recently she seemed distracted. I'd even say desperate in some way. And it became clear she was giving me, you know, signals. What sort of signals? Oh, more like a green light. And if the awful accident hadn't happened, then who knows whether... Oh, she was a very attractive lady. Aye, she was. Did Hubby ever see it together? Well, of course, on the stage, but I can't see how you'd have got with Maybe she told him. Now, why on earth would you do that, sir? To make him jealous. I never confuse women with human beings, McGregor. Well, sir, I think we can leave you to get back to your acting, directing, singing, claptrap. I've found what I'm looking for. You don't actually think that Gordley... Come in. Oh, sorry, Finlay. Uh, Laura's getting a little bit anxious out there. I just coming out. Who's Laura when she's at home? You saw her on stage. She's Fiona's understudy. Well, <laughs> she was. <laughs> she's leading lady now. Understudy? Oh, why the hell didn't you say, man? Come on, McGregor. She did it. Actors would kill for a part. Does he always do this? No. Sometimes he just beats a confession out of them. Can you stop that, McGregor? I'm interrogating a suspect. Sorry, sir. A suspect? I've been wondering who had the most to gain by Fiona Gordon's death, and it's you, Lassie. Sir, just five minutes ago... I've moved on. It's called flexibility. So, young lady, with Fiona Gordon out of the way, you could step into her shoes and be the star. Well, I'm sure the local women's prison has a good dramatic society and you'll have a captive audience. <laughs> Genius. Just tell us how you did it, miss. You actually think I'd murder Fiona to get her rule? You're an actor. You don't think the way we do. Where were you the night she died? Here, in the theatre. I've got a small part in the show. Well, I had. For pity's sake, she died in a car crash. It was a terrible accident, wasn't it? Uh, Miss Brand, you were probably one of the last people to see her. How was she that final night? How was she? Mm. Hang on. Are you saying that she might have taken her own life? Still think you killed her. It's my favoured theory so far, but let the lad do his thing. Well, suicide is a possibility, Miss Brand. If the balance of her mind, you know... She had been a bit sort of odd recently. Odd? I would. Well, I don't know. Yes, I do. Driven. That's pretty apt. I mean, determined. Like she'd really set her sights on something. Perhaps it was just the character she was playing. Sadie, Scottish play. Not again. Did you see her making a play for Finlay? I think everybody did. But he's happily married. We all thought she was too. The words happily and married rarely go together. So that night, after the show... She was in a really good mood. <gasps> ah, this'll tell you that she wasn't what you suggest. She even let some woman, a fan, I suppose, I didn't see, come in and talk to her in her dressing room. Not just talk, sing. Like the woman was auditioning or something. If he was so kind like that. I heard it through the wall. It was pretty awful. When Mrs Dover starts singing, it sends me over the edge. But I'm sure this was just an accident. I mean, she wouldn't have been so sociable if she was planning on... You know, mind you, one thing I do know, she wouldn't have fallen asleep at the wheel. Why not? People do. Fiona was always so wide awake and buzzy after a performance. She used to be a real insomniac, apparently. But she was always boasting that she could fall asleep like a log the moment she got into bed. All thanks to her husband. What a boring guy he must have been. There you go, he's our man. Dull enough to force her into another man's arms, but jealous enough to kill her. Two minutes ago, I was suspect number one. Keeping my options open. Don't leave the country much as anyone in their right mind would want to. Miss Brand, how is it for you, you know? Stepping into a dead woman's shoes. Mm. Scary. Come and see for yourself. I'll leave two comps in the box office tonight. Oh, thank you. Oh, that would be great, wouldn't it, sir? A miserable Scottish musical based on some obscure Shakespeare play. My cupeth runneth over. 
here in the steamy, where the water is hot and the talk is of murder. Out, damn spot. Shh. So much Sir, blood in him. Who fired the You're shot? disturbing the audience. Out, damn spot. Audience, I'm in a pub and I'm a barman, and now a real fine bite. Each one leaves the sea. What's that shushing in the king's head? We're not in the king's head. We're in the king's theatre, and Sadie Macbeth is about to stab herself. Best news I've heard all evening. <sighs> Say one thing for it, though. The knife she just picked up looks bloody real. See how it glints, McGregor? Damn clever. And she's dancing away like a good one. Who dances when they're about to top themselves? Please. Hang on, you... give me those binoculars. Shh. Thank you. Now, let's see. Bloody dandruff gets everywhere. Shh. Please. Hold the fort. That okay. looks like... Let me just get a better shot. Oh, Don't oh, you fool. Sir, it's not a soccer match. No, it's even bloodier. Drop that knife, lassie! Oh, it ain't a toy! Oh. Oh. Well, that's one way to stop the show. It's like someone's trying to murder the entire cast. I thought it was television that was killing off live theatre. <laughs> you should write this stuff down. Uh, anyway, no harm done. And by the way, you were right and you were wrong. Sorry, sir? Wrong about someone having it in for the cars. Tonight was for our benefit, McGregor, to send us on the wrong track. Somebody knew we were in that audience. But I was right about... Your girlfriend being murdered, yes, and by somebody pretty ruthless. But even I haven't worked out how. And he wouldn't have worked it out to this day if he hadn't had another blazing row with my poor old dad. Listen, Jockstrap, if I want a few of my favourite sweetmeats together, I put them between two nice slices of bread. I don't go into the nearest field, rip out a sheep's stomach, shove them all inside and write a poem about it. Have you, have you, have you come here to insult Scotland's national death? Can't hear you above the sound of someone gutting that sheep. I know you're insulting our national music. What next? Let me light up what I think. The weather, the lingo, oh. och, loch, Even your national flower stings when you really touch it. Oh, you should seek help for that heat of yours. Maybe get somebody could talk you out of your god awful smoking. I hear folk can do that now, huh? Oh, don't tell me you're lost for words. No, but Rob Roy, you've given me an idea. And it isn't to promote your wee son. Come in. Dr. Weir, I have a gentleman here. Well, a man says he needs to see you urgently. Well, does he have an appointment? Coppers don't make appointments. <sighs> How did you know I was going to be at the theatre last night? Eh? I didn't. I, I've just come back from staying with my late wife's parents in Mull. Ah. Well, if we try it out. Oh, then you can rest easy. Nothing happened between your wife and that director, Chappie. What? How dare you even... Oh, Dover. I've complained in writing to the Chief Constable. You'll be getting an official warning not to torment me again. What if I was seeking your help on a professional matter? You'd have to see me then, wouldn't you? If you want a sick note because you're a delusional psychopath, I'll get my pen now. Very kind, but I was thinking more of my smoking. <coughs> I hear you lot can do wonders these days. Not all of my lot can, but I happen to have great faith in hypnosis. Freud himself was addicted to cigars, you know. Probably afford them on what you people get paid. Now, come on, put me under and do the business. Chop, chop. You can't just... If I do, will you leave me alone? Cops on her. Well, just lie down in that couch and relax. Try not to break it. It's an antique. Now, as I talk to you, you're going to start to feel sleepy. Very, very sleepy. Dear Lord, I've never seen anyone go under so fast. OK. Now we're going to talk about cigarettes, Chief Inspector. You like cigarettes a lot, don't you? 
but they don't like you. So, whenever you think of smoking, you're going to believe that the cigarettes you've bought aren't really your friends at all. And you're going to throw them away. You'll feel much better for this. You'll feel... Did you ever hypnotise your wife? Hey, What? I, I thought you were under... A good copper never sleeps. Come on, Doctor. It'll go badly for you if you lie. Did you ever put the hex on her and tell her to drive off a cliff? Did I... You can't persuade someone to do what they don't want to do. And I keep telling you, I was 50 miles away. Yeah, OK. So what did you hypnotise your wife to do? What? Nothing. Bit slow there, Doc. I think you're telling we porky pies with a gentle hand around your throat helping anyway. <laughs> We're not really supposed to practice on our own family members, Chief Inspector. But poor Fiona would come back at night from the theatre with so much adrenaline she could never get to sleep. It was making both of us feel ill. So how did you help her? I made her a tape. What? You were getting sleepy. Woo. No, nothing so crude. I simply asked her to find a piece of music she liked, preferably a rather obscure recording, and then I hypnotised her so that when she heard it, she would start to feel really relaxed and swiftly fall into a deep sleep. What was it? Not bagpipes, I hope. It was that lovely air you heard at the cremation. But now, I think you'd better go. Oh, all right. Don't see how it helps anyway. Thanks for your time. I'm not paying you mind. It didn't work. I'll see myself out. Ah. Oh, hello. Again. Who are you? Etty Silver. We met at the crematorium, remember? Oh, yes, the no-fag woman. Hello, Dr Weir. Hello, Miss Silver. I wasn't expecting you today. No. I was just passing and thought you might have room for a wee one. But I can see you're busy. Don't let me stop you, madam. Cheerio, Doctor. Thanks for the... Uh... Uh, yes, uh, OK. Miss Silver, shouldn't you be back at the box office? What? You, receptionist, give me that phone, now. If you tell me where we were going, it'd maybe help me to find it. The copper at Glasgow Central said it's just at the end of this road. Ah, turn in there, turn in there! Oh. What? The breaker's yard? Why are we going to a breaker's yard? Because it's crush hour. Come on, McGregor. Let's hope we're not too late. Too late for what? Why don't you ever tell me anything? No point. The desk sergeant tried to call them here, but they weren't answering. You know about cars. The one in the nearest crusher. What is it? Well, it's a Triumph TRA. Hang on. It's the... just our luck. Well, at least there's no one man in the brute. Nip inside the car, laddie. Chop, chop. Get inside a car that's in the jaws of a crusher. You must McGregor, be get inside that car I... now. Sir, but wait, will you stop pushing me? Then get in that car. What the hell for? I'm betting there's a cassette still in the tape player. Without it, we'll never catch our killer. A cassette? And you feel it's worth killing me to get it? Oh, don't be dramatic. You're like one of them actors. Operator must be on his break. Go! Oh, it's no, it, it's... Please, it's not the thing! My mistake. Oh. He must have been having a oh. kip in his cab. Stop! Never rains. Stop! I nearly crushed you to bits. Now, how are you looking for? Thought there might be a cassette, Mr Fulton. Anyway, my bad luck. Your bad luck? There was a cassette. Took it out just yesterday. What? Do you still have it? Aye. Well, I played it too. It's just some woman singing, well, screeching more like bloody awful it was. Total rubbish. That'll be 50 quid. Oh. Oh, oh dear. Oh, good nice. <laughs> What the hell is that racket? Scotland's entry for the Eurovision Song Contest. Yeah, it's some woman's tape. I've no idea why we're even listening to it. That's why we're listening, laddie. Remember? The tune from the cremation. Someone, I think I know who, 
gave this tape to Fiona on the night before she died, said it was a tape of herself performing, and she asked Fiona if she'd listened to it in her car on the way home, which, being such a kind and helpful person, Fiona would have done. I, I still don't get it. Your pal, the doctor, had hypnotised his missus to fall asleep when she heard that special tune to cure her insomnia. Whoever gave her that tape slipped the very same tune into the middle of it, just when she hoped the car would be on a dangerous stretch of road. Brilliant! And no risk, because who would have thought to check the tape in any event? Except for me, of course. But we'll never get prints off it now. And nobody saw the woman in Fiona's dressing room, so we still can't prove who it was. I see that tip. Hey, that's police property. Oh, here we are. It says audition tip, Patsy Argent. Oh, well read, but it doesn't help us. Must be a stage name. Hang on, sir. Argent is Latin. It means silver. Etty silver. You <laughs> see? Tell you it was brilliant. Uh, good, but still no coconut. We need a confession, laddie. Call Glasgow Central for a fast car and a driver. We're going to pick up your doctor friend. Gourley? What's he got to do with it? You'll see. Are you OK, sir? Yeah, and why? You have the smokes and you get in the day. My fags are my enemies. Want to make something of it? I still don't see how I can help you. I have no idea who came into her dressing room that night. We think it was Etty Silver. Etty? Well, she does work there. Woman's got a crush on you, Doc. See it a mile off. It can happen. But I can't believe she'd harm Fiona. It was Fee herself who recommended my services to Etty. Can't you drive a bit faster, Constable? Trying my best, sir. Rain isn't helping. And these country roads can be treacherous. Why can't a woman live in the town like normal people? What was Etty's problem, Gourley? Ah, well, she originally presented with insomnia, And but... you made her a tape? Uh, no, I tried to help her by just listening. The talking cure. So she had no idea about Fiona's sleep tape? Now, Fiona was kind, but she was also needy. So she may well have told Etty. Maybe even played her our tune. I suppose all actresses are a bit needy. And, of course, Fiona needed a baby, particularly. I did wonder about her and that director, Chief Inspector whether she might have been looking to him to... <laughs> I sometimes think, Charles, if you'd been closer to home, you'd have been a prime candidate. So that's what she... Oh, I very much doubt that, Gourley. No, no way. That's the house down there, sir, bottom of the village. The wee one with the yellow door. And that's her car. She's driving off. The woman's been expecting her. She's doing a runner. But where's she going? Well, I mind there's a wee road up ahead that curls through the woods to Cooper's Bray. It's a steep hill, sir, right above the loch. If she goes that way, we can maybe catch her up. Oh, she's turning now. Is that what you mean, Constable? Aye, aye, on the one. Pretty hairy. Sit tight, Judge. Oh. 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 Get near and try to pull up ahead of her. I can't believe someone would try to kill my poor Fiona. Don't I just get to be a mad person without doing mad things. Oh, I suppose. Oh, hang on. What on earth is she doing now? She's opening a window. Why the hell in this weather? Catch her up while she's slowing a bit. No! Open your window back there, Doc. See what she wants. Maybe if she sees you, she'll give herself up. Why on earth is she singing? It's that awful song from her audition tape. Say one thing for her, she's got volume. I don't think she's singing, Chief Inspector. Well, not live. What do you mean? When I worked on Fiona's insomnia, I also taught her self-hypnosis. My guess is that Fiona taught Etty how to make her own sleep tape as a form of kindness. So Etty's... Sending herself to sleep with her own special song. In a car, heading towards a cliff. But that... We've got to wake her up. Cut her off, Constable. Hold on to your hearts. There's no barrier. She's going to go right over the edge. Already has, if you ask me. Well, that woke her up. But wait, where's she going now? Oh no, she's going to jump. I'm going over! Don't try to stop me! What are we going to do, sir? I respect her wishes. I'm going back to the car, it's pouring. <laughs> Great. Miss Silver! It would really help if you came quietly. I've been coming quietly 
for too long. I want to sing my unrequited love from the rooftop. Hmm. Or hilltops. Or more likely now that you've got me on the way down to certain death and that long. Oh, Ruddy Earl, I'm just an old softy doctor requiter. What? You prattle on about the talking cure. Talk cure. Okay. Mm. Uh, Etty! Uh, Etty! Etty, yeah, I, I like you. I, I, I like you ever so much. What am I doing? I need more than that, Gurley! She's going to leap off. So let her, she killed my wife. You're a doctor, Gurley, and you're a good man. That's why. That's why Fiona chose you and not me. That's why she loved you and not me. Good lad, McGregor. Well played. Right. Etty, it was never Fiona. She was just a distraction. You're the main event. I love you. Please believe me. Um, uh, Dover? I tell her you'll do her one of your delusional psychopath sick notes if it was good enough for me. Fine, fine. Uh, I'll say our love drove you mad. Oh, good idea. <sighs> They'll believe that. And when I get out, I'll sing to you, my darling. Or you could let her jump. <coughs> oh, I thought cigarettes were no longer your friends. The good doctor got me to eat the ones I buy myself. Didn't say anything about the ones your son buys for me. <coughs> oh, who do you stand it, Charlie? Oh, they've just got to accept my transfer application this time, Dad. Not while no one else will work with me, they won't, huh? <laughs> Speed, bony, bow tie, like a bird on a wing. Come on, Dad. Over the sea. I know this lovely high sky. rock. Can read the land that's uh, born to be king. Oh. Over the sea, the sky. <laughs> In Dover and the Smoking Gun by Paul Mendelssohn, based on characters created by Joyce Porter, Chief Inspector Dover was played by Kenneth Cranham, Sergeant McGregor by Stuart McQuarrie, Mr. McGregor, Alexander Morton, Gourley, Gordon Kennedy, Etty Silver, Carolyn Bonnyman, Laura Brand, Francis Gray, Finlay Gemmell, Neil McKenna,